Hey, welcome to I Flip for Math, MathCast number three, Volume of Composite Figures. I'm Mrs. Gooding, and our quote tonight is by Linda Buck. She's a neurobiologist. Sounds like a pretty big, cool thing, huh? And it is. She said, one of the things I love about doing science is it's really puzzle solving, and so is math. And the math we're going to do tonight is going to really feel a lot like puzzle solving, but I want you to think of it as fun and a challenge and just a way to exercise those math muscles and, um, and just really focus on breaking the bigger overall challenge into small parts that you can really manage and solve. So our learning goal tonight is to find the volume for each rectangular prism and a composite figure, and then add to find their total volume. Our individual lesson learning goals are to um, combine two rectangular prisms to create a composite figure. And a composite just means anytime you have something that's composite, it's made up of smaller parts. And um, so it, it's the same thing in math. It's going to be a figure that's made up of two parts, at least two parts. We are going to find the length, the width, and the height for each of the two rectangular prisms. So if you have two rectangular prisms making a composite figure, we're going to kind of pull them apart and find the length, the width, and the height for each of them. And then we're going to use that volume formula that we've been using and find the volume for each of those rectangular prisms. At the same time, we can then add those two volume amounts together to find the total volume of the composite figure. It sounds like a lot. We're going to break it apart into very small steps so that it's not so challenging. Um, there is an image of a composite figure. That three-dimensional L is actually two rectangular prisms put together. And you could find the volume for each of them and then add them and know how much they are and all. A composite figure in math is a figure that is made from two or more geometric figures. And we are only going to do rectangular prisms today. And a rectangular prism is a solid three-dimensional figure where all of the sides are rectangles. And you can see a picture that purple brick or block looking thing is a rectangular prism. It has a length, a width, and a height so that you can find its volume. A brick or a shoebox is also a rectangular prism. So um, Linda Buck actually won the Nobel Peace Prize in 2004. She won it um, with Richard Axel. That's Richard Axel and they won it for their work on the olfactory receptors, which basically means how we smell things. And so what you can see there is kind of a, one of their drawings and one of their presentations on how we smell things. So now we're going to find the volume of a composite figure in our example, and you can see that figure there. Um, and we're going to break it apart. You can break it apart in two different ways but I'm just going to choose one way at a time. If you break it apart in a different way later in the following practice problems, it's totally okay as long as you get the same answer that I do because no matter how you break it apart, you should always get the same answer. Let's go ahead and see how we're going to do this. So I've drawn the composite figure. It looks kind of like a set of steps right here so that you can see it. Um, I went ahead and divided it this way, so it's like I'm taking this top step off to find the volume of it, and then I'm going to find this whole volume of this step below it. And you could divide it either way. I could have drawn a dotted line this way and found this volume and this volume separately. It doesn't matter which way you do it as long as you get the same answer because you figured your length and width and height very carefully. So in this case, I drew my dashed line here, and I'm going to call this top step A, and my lower step, which is larger, B. And I'm going to solve for A first, and I'm going to, there we go. I'm going to solve for A first, and my volume equals length times width times height. I'm going to use my best bamboo tablet handwriting, and it's not very good tonight. And my length of A, this is what I usually call my length, the, the bottom edge of that front face. I don't know, it doesn't tell me what it is here, but I know, because I know what a prism is, that whatever length this edge is, this edge is going to be the same length, and this edge is going to be the same length. So if this is 3, this is 3, and this is also 3 centimeters. So my length is 3 centimeters. There's my length, so my width goes back this way, and again, it's not labeled, 
but knowing what a prism is, I know that this length is going, this width is going to be the same as this width and this width, which is eight centimeters. That's a pretty important um, geometric truth to know that your prisms have edges that are the same width and the same length and, and it doesn't really matter which edge you're on going around, they're going to, because their rectangles are going to be the same. So eight centimeters and our height, it does tell us the height is four centimeters. And now I can start multiplying. Three times eight is 24 square centimeters because I'm multiplying the dimensions of length and the dimensions of width, that's two dimensions. Now I'll add Here's my dimension of height. And 24 times 4 is 96 cubic centimeters. Because once I've multiplied the length and the width and the height, I've multiplied all three dimensions together. So I have to make sure I put that 3 there. And this is the volume for figure A. So now I'm going to come up next to it. I hope I'm going to to it and solve for figure B, volume equals length times width times height. No, I, I rewrite it every time. So I'm finding the volume of this figure and the length is seven centimeters. And the width is eight centimeters. That width did not change the way I measured it. And the height is three centimeters. So I will multiply seven times eight and I get 56 square centimeters and rewrite my height. And 56 times three is 168 and now I have cubic centimeters because I have three dimensions. Two dimensions in the base and one dimension in the height. And two plus one is three, so that's where I get that third dimension. Now, I have figured the volume for both A and B. All I have to do now is add them together. So I'm going to write 168 cubic centimeters plus 96 cubic centimeters and let's see I get 14, 15, 16, 264 cubic centimeters and that would be our final answer. I'm going to actually label it TV. Total volume, I kind of made that up but it makes it very clear that our total volume is 264 cubic centimeters. Let's try another one. So here is another practice problem. You can see a picture of Richard Axel and Linda Buck working in their lab. Science labs always look really cool and messy. Um, they're probably really organized. They just don't look organized to maybe a mathematician's mind. There's a girl smelling. She's using her olfactory receptors. And here is our practice problem number two. Find the total volume of the composite figure, and there is the figure below. So make sure that you pause it. Use the format to figure out what the volume is for both figures, or both prisms, and then add them together. Write it in your journal and push play to check out to see if you have the right answer. Did you write 72 cubic units? Let's see how we did that. So I'm going to divide my figure the way I like to, and I'm going to call this bottom prism A, and this top kind of squatty step prism B, and I'm going to solve for A first. So volume equals length times width times height. The length of prism A is six centimeters. And the width is four centimeters. Oh, look, I can even draw this line back up like this. Four centimeters. And my height, I know that 
this whole side is four centimeters, but this, the one I'm looking at, prism A, it has a height of two centimeters. So now I will multiply six times four and I get 24 square centimeters times the height of two centimeters. And I get 48, because 24 times two is 48, cubic centimeters wasn't too bad. And B So for B right here, I know that this entire length all along here is 6 centimeters. But it tells me that this top edge is 3 centimeters, which means this is also 3 centimeters, which means this is also 3 centimeters right there. So my length is three centimeters. My width is still four centimeters because it has to be equal to this amount here. And my height, again I have to be kind of a detective and figure this out. Um, if this is four centimeters and this much of it is two centimeters, even though it doesn't look the same, this is also two centimeters. So remember, they don't look like the correct amounts, but we're going by the numerical amounts, not by what the picture looks like, because I'm not that great at drawing pictures. So 3 times 4 is 12, 12 square centimeters, times 2 centimeters, and 12 times 2 is also 48, no. 12 times 2 isn't 48. What were we thinking about? Scribble that out. 12 times 2 is 24. I owe you a push-up because I'm losing my mind again. 24 cubic centimeters. <laughs> it's kind of funny that I missed the easiest problem I did tonight. And now I'm going to add 48 cubic centimeters and 24 cubic centimeters centimeters and I'm going to get 72 cubic centimeters. So my total volume is 72 cubic centimeters. <laughs> it's after midnight. I'm really sleepy. But I'm having fun doing math with you. So, so it is time to challenge yourself and Linda Buck challenged herself trying to figure out how our smell system works. And you can see her receiving her Nobel Prize for that. It's a really huge award and really exciting. And now that you're going to challenge yourself, this is how you're going to do it. You're going to find the volume, the total volume of the composite figures that have fractional edges. So you can see those fractions there. You're going to be multiplying fractions by whole numbers and whole numbers by fractions. But you can go back and watch that lesson if you've forgotten how to do that. Or you can just do your best and then watch and I'll show you how to figure it out. Go ahead and pause it, work it out in your journal, and then push play when you think you have the total volume. Did you write two and a half cubic feet? Let's see how we did that. Okay, so we are going to, they even divided these for us. We're going to call this one A and this one B. So we'll find the volume of A first. Again, volume equals length times width times height. When you break it down, it's just, it's not as hard as it seems if you break it into all its separate parts. So the length of A is 3 feet, and the width of A is 1 foot. This is going to be some big math problems, big math problems, I can tell. And the height is a half of a foot. So when I multiply them together, I multiply 3 times 1, I actually get 3 square feet, and I'm going to multiply that times that half foot height and three times one half. If we came over here and we can even multiply it right here. 
3, I'm going to write it as a fraction, times 1 half equals 3 times 1 is 3, and 1 times 2 is 2. Well, that's an improper fraction, and we know that 2 goes into 3 one time with a remainder of 1, and 2 stays our denominator. So our final answer is 1 and a half cubic feet. It wasn't crazy hard math, but it can be a little bit challenging. I'm actually going to switch to a green pen now because I don't want you to get all our numbers mixed up. Here is B. Volume equals length times width times height. Volume equals, and the length of B, I can see by knowing that these are going to be equal, is one half foot. And the width of this one is going to be the same, this one foot here, so it's one foot here, so it's one foot here, and it's one foot up here. So times one foot. See? Terribly hard math. And the height of this figure is two feet kind of made it easier by giving us the measurements. We didn't have to be a detective and figure any out. But I do have to multiply 1 half times 1. And I know what half of 1 is, but I just want you to see the computation of it. I'm going to write 1 as a fraction. 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 1 is 2. So half of 1 is actually 1 half. But I still have 1 half square foot times 2, and you probably know as well as I do that 1 half of 2 is actually 1. But I'm going to show you the math. 1 half times the whole number 2, I'm going to write it as a fraction. 1 times 2 is 2, 2 times 1 is 2, and 2 over 2 is an improper fraction. So 2 divided by 2 is 1 whole. So my answer is one cubic foot for that prism. So when I add them together, I have one and a half feet cubed plus one cubic foot. And I add one half plus nothing is one half. And one plus one is two. So my total volume equals two and a half cubic feet. I hope you had fun with that one and got a good review of multiplying fractions times whole numbers. Finishing up. So tonight was challenging, I agree. Um, finding the volume of composite figures is a lot of work. And it's not that the work is incredibly hard, but you do have to be very careful to make sure that you have the correct length and width and height of each prism. And then, of course, careful in your multiplication and careful in your addition. We always want to check those. Um, in, in your journal, write down any questions that you still have. Crazy composite figures. You have completed MathCast 3. Find the volume of composite figures. I can't wait to see you tomorrow.